Hello and welcome to Blog Sprout. I'm LJ and today I'm going to go through what I learned by changing my WordPress theme. So I did this last month in July 2022 and it was definitely a process and it took some time and I'll go through why I made the changes, some of the problems I ran into and what I then learned. So why did I change my theme? The main reason was that my old theme had pretty heavy code in it. And when I went through PageSpeed Insights, some of the main reasons that my site was slow was because of some bulk text that was just bulk code that was in my old theme. So I thought that changing my theme would change my speed. But the other thing that I thought about was that I had lost support from the theme. It had been pretty good, but I did have to pay extra to get the support. Um, I was getting updates, but the one-on-one -on -one help or the, the help wasn't all that useful. So I didn't think paying for the extra support was going to be worth it. So why might you change themes? Well, you might consider a paid theme if you're currently on a free one. Um, so you may look at something that's cheaper and provides support for longer um, or the price of what you're using might go up and you might want to go to subscription service that's slightly lower. Um, you may want to look and you should look at what features are included with the theme. Most themes have built in, um, yeah, built in features that reduce the need for other plugins. What support is available? Um, so I moved to Generate Press and I found that their support documentation and their uh, forum have been pretty useful. Um, we also want to consider the, the site weight, which refers to the kind of amount of backend code, and then what customizations you can make, because the theme does have a big impact on how your site ultimately looks. So what a theme can impact? We're going to go through each of these um, seven things um, in this video. So it can impact page speed, indexing, site structure, revenue, content, the look of site, and because of all of those, ranking. So page speed has major impact on your site speed. It's the basic code for your website. Um, and it can reduce the need for extra plugins because it has some of those extra features. Um, you no longer need bigger bulks of code doing the same thing. Um, so for example, the last theme I used had built in table of contents code. So I didn't need to add a table of contents feature. But now that I use Genera Generate Press, um, I actually lost that feature. So I did have to um, add my own table of contents plugin. But there are plenty other um, features in that that reduce the need for like sliding panels and, and things like that. So indexing, it can impact indexing because now that your site has essentially changed um, kind of the, un the underlying code, um, search engine bots do have to um, crawl this new code and sometimes they're easier to crawl than others. I don't know much about the technicality so I can't go into much detail, but um, I definitely believe that it has an impact on how bots can crawl your site. And it seems that there are some that are more um, search engine friendly than others. So it can impact your site structure. So my old theme, I actually created three different types of like pages and posts. So I had a pages group in WordPress, I had a post group, and then I had a blog post group. So I thought the blog posts group would just um, you know, make it more content focused. The regular post group in the old theme I was using was more focused around like a particular product. So it had a lot of extra features that, you know, had you, you put like discount prices and things like that. So I, I thought that was too complicated for what I needed. So I created this blog group. But what ended up happening is that it made all of the links have um, blog in the URL. It said my domain slash blog and then the the rest of the URL. But when I moved to Generate Press, I had to figure out a way to restructure those links so that I still included the blog so that Google and all my backlinks still matched up. So that's something to consider. 
Um, something to also consider is the schema. So whether things are considered articles or recipes or posts like that, a lot of that comes from um, an SEO plugin, but these oftentimes can be built into your, um, your theme as well. You also want to think about the categories and if those have remained the same, um, you know, before I had them in blog categories and I had to move them to just regular categories. Again, I think for most themes, you don't have to do this, but it can affect it. And that's why I'm mentioning it. And then um, breadcrumbs. I have my breadcrumbs set up through my SEO plugin. So that wasn't much of an issue, but um, having that, that site structure and content oriented in the same way is, is very important. So revenue. Um, so I was still using Azoic. I still am using Azoic with the site. And I ended up needing to create a whole new set of placeholders. Azoic does have recommendations if you're changing your themes on how to maintain the old placeholders you have. Um, but it was more manual process than I was willing to do. You know, since I had over 200 plus articles, I didn't want to go through every single page and every single placeholder. And um, do whatever I had to do. So I ended up keeping those placeholders and kind of letting them find, like sit wherever they needed to. But then um, I also used the Zoic plugin to create brand new placeholders. Um, and I also struggled with video placeholders transferring over. So from the Zoic side, it wasn't the easiest thing to do. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, it didn't seem to have a huge, um, huge impact. It's hard to know because I was just invited to the um, the premium program as well, and, and things are kind of uh, readjusting at that point too. So content, um, why I say content is that this is more referring to like the features and what's actually on your site. So on my old theme, there were special content blocks that had a picture, a button, a description, and they were meant to like hold products. Um, but when I switched to my new theme, all of those disappeared. So any of my pages that had those, had those, I had to go back, recreate them all, add all the links again, add like reattach the images and kind of make my own version. That took a very long time. That's most of the effort that um, went into went into this. So although these features can be really helpful when you're looking at your theme, when you're changing your theme, if you're moving away to two incompatible themes with these types of features, um, just like with that table of contents, you have to remove all the old ones and put in all the new ones. And that, that can be a very manual process and take a lot of time. Um, and then your theme also, you know, will affect your look and the customization options. And this is so specific to the theme. Um, one of the reasons I like Generate Press is they have a couple like base themes that um, you can import and then you can kind of customize it and make it look how you want. Uh, but not every site can look the same on different themes. And there's a lot more limitations on customization when you don't have a paid theme and you are just looking at, um, at a free version. And then ranking. So ranking factors are how the site could be indexed, the content, page speed, engagement. So all those factors basically that were discussed before can affect your ranking. Um, the look can affect the engagement, the content can affect how long people stay on, how easy it is for Google to index. Your page speed can affect your ranking. So inadvertently changing the theme can affect your ranking. Um, and it's not necessarily because you changed the theme, it's because the impact the theme had on these factors. If um, you watch one of my previous videos where I said I lost 50% traffic in one day, which is above, um, you'll see that I also ran into an issue with um, essentially with ranking because somehow my theme had no index set on all my pages and I didn't notice till a few days later. So um, although um, the sites were fortunately still showing up on search results, there was, it was basically a blank search result on on Google. So no one was clicking through it and it, it therefore kind of bumped my ranking. And I, I f it still feels like I'm trying to recover back from that. Um, but it fortunately did come back pretty quickly once I figured that out. So um, that's kind of an overview of 
the things I learned and what I did when I changed my themes. The main problems I ran into went into were the incompatibility between the two themes and having to recreate content, the um, the site structure, and uh, the Ezoic ads. So those are kind of the three biggest struggles from start to finish. The actual um, conversion of one theme to the other only took about like a week, but it was pretty nonstop work um, because I wanted to create more content and I was using a, um, a staging site first. I, um, I kind of put my writing on a halt until I finished making all the changes. And then when I made all the changes, I wanted to see how Google responded, if the site worked, and then I was going to create more content. Um, so it definitely slowed down my content production for the month. But overall, I do think my site speed has been better. And I now have less plugins and I'm using a Zoic Leap. So all of those things combined definitely achieved my um, my goal of improving my site speed. I wish in terms of page speed insights and um, the leap features, I saw a bigger jump, but I am still seeing my core web vitals being green in um, desktop and mobile, which I didn't have. I was in the, the warning for desktop. So it's nice to see that desktop is positive because I hope that that change will also improve the rankings for desktop because I have a pretty big disparity between mobile and desktop. And desktop really gives me, brings in more revenue when people click on my content. So um, I'm hoping that this change might improve that as well. So um, if you're planning to change your theme, good luck. It can be um, a handful. It can be a lot of work. Um, but if you take into consideration some of these, some of these um, potential issues, even before you choose your first theme, it can really save you some headache in the future. Um, so I do recommend Generate Press. That's what I use for my sites now. And with with a Generate Press, it's essentially a subscription, but you get up to 500 sites. So if you're looking to expand your portfolio, if you get familiar with Generate Press, it becomes really easy um, to just create more and brand new websites. Um, so I do plan to continue with continue with them. If you're looking to change your theme and want a fast, good looking site, I definitely recommend Generate Press. And you can look at the link below for my affiliate link. I'd really appreciate it um, if you are considering it there's also a free trial so it's really risk-free and I started on a free trial and then once I got the site set up um, I didn't want to go back so I I stuck through with the um, with the paid version so thanks for watching this is Blog Sprout I'm LJ and I'll see you in the next video bye